think they're working. They actually, I think we, they are. We tested they From somewhere? I did. Oh, oh, the cookies are here. Oh, that's it. Is that yours? Yeah. I told Mark. I told him no. I told him no. I told him no. I told him no. Actually, um, Rachel's not. I am the there. Well, I'm the there. Okay. Susan, are you ready? Who's in there? Good evening. I'm just going to get you. I'm going to sit down and speak to the mic. Good evening, everyone. 
Thank you for being here tonight. We have a little bit of a problem with our AV system. Uh, our staff is working through it. I believe the mics on the podium work, but not the other mics. If you are here to speak to the council, I would like to request that you use the mic on the side, as that the, uh, the stadium mic uh, will not work. Before we begin, I want to introduce uh, two groups of people, I should say, one individual and a large group. Tonight's invocation will be led by Kellington Wilson. Kellen is a recently uh, elected SIST Board of Trustee, and he has also served in one of our citizens' committee. Also, after that, the, uh, tonight's uh, Pledge of Allegiance will be led by a wonderful group of kids of Mesquite and Sunnyvale. Uh, the team's name is Mesquite Marlins, and I want to welcome each one of you to this event. I was told that Mesquite Marlins uh, is made up of 165 swimmers. Of that, 60 are from Sunnyvale. And I believe that Coach, Coach Holland is with us also. So I'm here. Welcome. At this time, let me invite uh, Mr. Kellinda Wilson to lead the invocation. Please join me in standing for the invocation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to assemble and to gather here today just to do those things that you've asked of us and do it in an honorable manner. Father, we thank you for living in a country as great as this, and we thank you for the opportunity to serve a community and a small town such as ours, and we all hold near and dear. May we ever be mindful that all we do is for the greater good, not for selfish ambition. Lord, we ask you to guide our thoughts, our decision-making process, and ultimately let them be done for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, everybody. Use mics. Use mics. Get closer. I think. The TV screen is working. Okay. Oh. okay. Okay, the time is 7.05. Let me call to order the regular town council meeting of town of Sunnyvale for July 8th. Today is the first meeting in July. For the record, uh, the time is 7.05. For the record, all council members are present, so we have call up. Um, just one second. 
first one is recognition, right? Okay, first item is the public forum. If, there, if there's anyone who would like to come and speak to the council at this time, please come forward. One request, if you are here to speak to the council on any agenda items or otherwise, let me request that you uh, sign in. There is a sign-up sheet outside, a sign-in sheet outside. I, I request that you sign in in that form that way staff can keep record of uh, who is here and who is speaking to the council. With that, again, time for public forum. If you would like to come and speak to the council at this time, uh, please come forward. No one is coming forward, so I am going to close the public forum. Council, it's, it's, it's always my great pressure uh, when we as a body, we invite uh, many of our citizens to come and serve in different capacities. And we have a lot of good, qualified, educated, experienced professionals living in Sunnyvale. So, and many of them sign up. So tonight, it's, it's my privilege to recognize two groups of citizens on your behalf. The first one is recognition of the police focus group committee members. I'm going to speak from here, only reason the mics only work, only the, the, the podium mics, the, state, the uh, dais mics work, that's why. A few months back, when we knew Sunnyvale has to look for uh, our own police department or options other than Dallas Sheriff Office. Uh, many of us were very sad because we like our DSO. We have a wonderful group of police officers, people love. Uh, and every day I get emails, every time there's a tragedy in town, I get emails saying that what a wonderful job our staff, our police officers done. At the same time, we knew that we, we couldn't uh, keep the service anymore. So we requested a group of citizens to come forward and to work with a consultant to research, analyze the data, look at options. And they did. For many days, they came together after work. We had uh, many people with a lot of police experience, uh, community experience, a uh, very diverse group of citizens from different walks of life, different parts of town, different experiences in life. And at the end, they made a recommendation to council to form Sunnyvale Police Department. And that was a big help for the council. And currently, we are in the process of recruiting a public safety officer. And tonight, uh, there will be the first reading of the ordinance to form Sunnyvale Police Department. So again, this is because of the hard work of this uh, citizens committee. So tonight, I want to recognize all of them. Let me read the names from the stage that you can hear your name. Ryan Finch, Council Member Finch, or Mayor Proton Finch. Mike Jones, Thomas Latham, Kellyton Wilson, Randy Ferguson, Roy Gray, Robert White, Stephen Pettit, Debbie Geis, Nick Sloan, and that's it. That was the group of team. So after this, I'll come forward, and uh, if you could come forward and receive the certificate from me, that will be appreciated. Second is a, a committee, citizens committee, called Capital Improvement Plan Citizens Committee. As you know, um, Sunnyvale is aging, like most of us at all. Um, and some of the infrastructure we have in Sunnyvale are quite old. Some are older than Sunnyvale. And over the years, um, this is a lot of expense. So it's, it's hard to make decisions. So for various reasons, we did not address those is issues effectively. Now we have a large number of capital improvement projects. I think total, total add up to $107 million, I believe. So our staff came up with uh, an approach, a process for prioritizing and selecting this project. Then we solicited the help of, again, a group of very qualified citizens to come and work with the staff to reevaluate, reassess, and prioritize for the town 
these projects. And that committee made a recommendation to council on a sequence of uh, projects, a series of projects, and the sequence, what timing. And that's a big help. And part of the way, the, there are multiple ways to fund this project. Some of them are tax notes, some of them are uh, uh, COs, certificate of obligation, and other is uh, the general election. We go to the voters for uh, approval. And again, I want to thank each one of these citizens committee members for the town. When, when I sat through some of these uh, meetings, I could see the stress on the face of some of these committee members just looking at the, the dollars it takes. And I don't think many of them realize how much work is there. As we move forward, in, by, in May of 2020, you will hear, if the council approves, there will be an election coming up uh, to approve uh, possibly the police department, a new facility, uh, a public safety office, I should say. And, is that right? I'm, I'm sorry, the fire department, I, I'm wrong. Fire department and the animal control facility. So I would, I would uh, request and expect that these committee members, even though they may not be a formal committee anymore, will continue to stay and, and, uh, uh, and fight for these causes. With that, let me announce the names. It is Teresa Brucer, Leanne Williams, Cindy Bernowski, Todd Randa, Ryan Finch, Lyndon James, Kevin Clark, Superintendent Doug Williams, Chris Lawless, and Andrew Harper, and Anthony Farmer. So at this time, I'm going to invite uh, the police committee to come forward. After that, uh, we will have the citizens, the Capital Improvement Projects Committee members to come forward.
Thank you once again, everyone. Laptop died. Just, just gonna charge. Okay. It's all good. It's all good. Today's a good day. Okay. The next items is the consent agenda items. Um, item number one that is to consider approval of minutes for the regular meeting of the town council for June. 24-2019. Council, is there anything you would like to add or delete uh, to this consent agenda items? Okay, if not, can I have a motion to approve consent agenda item one as presented? Make a motion to approve consent agenda item one as presented. Motion made by Mayor Porton Finch to approve consent agenda item one as presented. Is there a second? Mayor, I'll second. Second by Mr. Allen. Everyone heard the motion? All in favor signify. All opposed, motion passed 7 0. Uh, the next is the public hearing portion of the agenda. Item number two hold a public hearing, discuss, consider, and act upon the first reading of Ordinance 19 16. An ordinance amending Ordinance 19 10, which made appropriations for the support of the town of Sunnyvale for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2018, and ending September 30, 2019, and amending the annual budget of the town of Sunnyvale for the year 2018 to 2019 fiscal year. Ms. Hopkins. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, to fund additional incentives and recognize the expiration of the road maintenance sales tax program. Staff has reviewed the budget and identified line item changes that will provide necessary funding through increases in certain revenues and decreases in certain expenses. Page nine of your packet, I'm sorry, page 11 of your packet has those items listed. It affects the general fund and the 4A Economic Development Corporation. And I'll be glad to answer any questions on any of those line item changes. I can have one, one question on it. See, uh, on the expense side, um, road maintenance, I, I understand why the $141,000 difference, I get that. Are there any projects we did not do? Or we did have one PSA, Brian might be able to speak to this, uh, that we did not get done as part of the five-year plan that we had in place. We're going to try to get that going again, I believe, with Dallas County. I believe the roads affected were Tower Place. Um, I'm afraid I didn't bring that list with me, but there was one portion of that five-year plan that we did not get done. It was TRIP. Trip. Right, and so those are the... Um, items that we brought forward and requested of the county. We don't know if they're going to enter into that agreement with us or not, but we have um, um, set aside that, and you'll see it in the upcoming budget sessions, um, enough money to do those next fiscal year. That's for the four, two, that Brian? Yes, that's correct. Yes, yes sir. Well, on the ballpark, we have support from 4B. They gave us a contingency, so we feel like with that contingency that we could lower the general funds portion of that and still get all the projects done that Burton has identified needed being done. Yes. Council question for Ms. Hopkins. Liz, is there a reason why the 
general fund sales tax revenue decrease is not the same amount as the 4A revenue increase. I believe it has to do with the way that we accrued for that. I'll have to verify that for you. But the $214,000 is actual. Okay. That's actual money. There's no accrual in there. Okay. The 4A has an accrual portion gotcha. in theirs. And that, I believe, is what the difference is. Okay. Thanks. Ms. Hopkins. Okay, it's a public hearing portion of the agenda, so if anyone would like to come forward and discuss this agenda item, please come forward. No one is coming forward, so I'm going to close the public hearing. Council, are there additional discussions or questions on agenda item two? Okay, if not, can I have a motion with respect to agenda item two? Mayor, make a motion to approve agenda item two as presented. Motion made by Mayor Portum Finch to approve agenda item two as presented. All second. Second by Mr. Clark. Everyone heard the motion? Are there additional discussions? All in favor signify. All opposed to motion passed 7 0. Can that be put on consent agenda next time? That's just to move it to a second reading. Yeah, that's the first reading, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, let's come back the to the consent. second reading. Consent. Let's put in the or consent public. agenda. That'd be okay with you? You need to come back? It's a public hearing. You're right. You, you, you know, we had some objection from yeah. the Fair enough. Let's, let's put our audience public. about yeah. putting those kinds of things okay. on the consent agenda. Yeah, good point. Mr. Good point. Moving on to agenda item three, that is to hold a public hearing, discuss Consider and act upon the request by Brian Connolly to approve a reply to Stony Creek 5A, Lot 5R, Block A, at about 431 East Strip Road. Rashad Jackson. Mayor, Council. Um, applicant is, uh, as you noted, uh, Brian Connolly, um, and he's working with the Paul Taylor Homes builder. Um, they are coming in to replat because of the uh, previous plat that created this remnant lot to create uh, the Stony Creek 5B Section 2. Um, the remnant lot was created because of Shelby Lane to provide access to that new phase. So in order to provide for a more developable lot, they're combining the two lots, uh, which created a lot 5R Block A. Um, PNZ reviewed this and, and didn't note any issues and recommended approval. Council, question for Mr. Jackson. Rashad, the piece of uh, land that's rectangular but also depicted as being cut off by the uh, red dash dotted line, there's a high piece of land that's left. Is that for what? My understanding that is just HOA, open space area, and it's, I believe, an easement there. Um, the applicant can probably speak to that in more detail than I can. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Welcome. Yes, sir. And also, there's a sign sheet outside, if you don't mind, please. Outside, yeah. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Uh, my name is Paul Taylor. I'm the applicant, uh, 17950 Preston Road. You ask about the remnant, the uh, triangular piece. Right. That was retained by the developers of Phase B as a HOA lot. And uh, I don't know why that was retained, but we respect that, and that will remain an HOA lot. Uh, we are just combining the remnant lot with the existing one so we don't have something we're selling by meets and bounds, and now we have one. So we're sure we're talking about the same piece. Yeah. Sure. This, this piece of yes. nothing here. Yeah, HOA. Managed by the Southgate development here. So the road, the road is going to come. Yeah. Shelby Lane's going to extend here. It's already there. And there's not going to be a turn here, so that's going to. Seems awkward to me. I mean, if you don't want the property and they want to do something with it, you just need something. Well, you know, they've already deeded it to the HOA. So they they uh, purchased purchased this piece from Grand Morgan out of this lot and just left it to rent it. Huh. I'm just trying to think about it. Sure. Yeah. In my mind. 
didn't that exist because they did the expansion or the made the entrance larger than originally anticipated because now they have that uh, split median oh you're talking about the lot there. why the lot is small yeah that's that? why it became sort of a remnant lot that's what you called it uh, I think it's because they ended up taking yeah. more property yeah, but to uh, to make that no, uh, entrance this was from the this normal is, two is, lanes to yeah. a divided it is wider at the front the, uh, it is. The road looks like it's next a little bit, right? It's yeah, wide. The road to. kind of next a little bit, right? It, 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 it is. It's wider. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's awkward. These kinds of things you wonder in 10 years from now, what's that going to look like in the community? It, it's not necessarily your issue, but I was just curious what that's going to well, look like. Well, I actually think it'll look nice. I mean, I, could, I didn't do it, but it'll have to be a nice little park at the end of the road. So. Okay. I, I think that's the intent. It's part of the HOA so open, so open space how, area. How, how big is that? 20 it's by like 10? Uh, no, you know, I think Forty-four by sixty by sixty by sixty on the top by hundred down here. Oh, you're right, sixty oh, wow, by okay. hundred. Yeah, that's bigger than okay. that. Well. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate that. <laughs> Are there additional question for the applicant? So, would you like to add anything? No, uh, that's all I have. I'm on the agenda. He has another item that, so he's just gonna sit and wait for a second. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Um, Council, other additional questions? This is a public hearing uh, agenda, so if anyone from the public would like to come forward and talk about this item, uh, please come forward. No one is coming forward, so I am going to close the public hearing on this agenda item. Council, other additional discussions? If not, can I have a motion with respect to item number three? Mr. Mayor, make a motion to approve agenda item three as presented. Motion made by Mayor Potem Finch to approve agenda item three as presented. Is there a second? A second. Second by Councilmember Freeman. Everyone heard the motion? Are there additional discussions? All in favor signify. All opposed, motion passed seven. Zero. Going on to the development services portion of the agenda, item number four, discuss, consider, and act upon Stony Creek Phase 5A general note requirements specified for Lot 1, Block A, at or about 423 Trip Road. Mr. Jackson? Mayor, Council. Um, as a follow up to the previous item, uh, uh, Mr. Paul Taylor has purchased the last few lots of St Stony Creek Phase 5A, that all that face uh, Trip Road. Uh, those lots have remained vacant for quite some time, and he's planning to develop them. Um, upon review during the building permit process, we noted, a staff, my staff noted, a general note that was on the original plant, plat, which called for town council review prior to building on this, this specific lot. Um, we couldn't find the reasoning in any of the language in the history or research or anything like that. Uh, so that's the reason why it's on the agenda. Uh, the only idea is there is another, this is block A. There is a lot one block B, which is when you enter Robin Ridge on Stony Creek phase 5A. Um, and if you consider that, if that was a typo, block B, it would make more sense because that's a detention area that has a area that looks like you could build a home, but you shouldn't build a home there. So I don't know the history, um, but either way, we needed to present it before council. Council, uh, Mr. Mr. Wade or Mr. Egan, do you, do you recall by any chance what they, they what may be? They should have. I don't. I was not on council at that time. I did talk to Mayor Falk today. Okay. And he doesn't recall specifically, but uh, it could have been a drainage consideration okay. because, as you know, the school drains to that particular corner and goes east from uh, that drainage ditch, for lack of a better word. 
and a concern there as to what uh, the school or the town might have needed with regards to drainage considerations. Uh, I assume, and I'm going to ask Mr. Taylor this at some point, uh, these lots are going to face Trip Road. So are we going to, what are we going to do with our drainage culvert there? It's going to stay. Uh, I assume, Rashad, that that drainage culvert will stay. Are you talking to a specific lot or you're just well, along I'm the I'm entire? I'm really talking along that uh, trip. Along long trip. trip there, these this four the or five homes. The bar and dish area will have to be improved okay. and the uh, driveway approaches, the culverts up under those driveway approaches will have to be Go improved. across the drainage. Yes. So it'll stay there. Yes. Okay. Um, any, any requirements as far as our current requirements for drainage? Um, and um, any issues with those in the um, for our engineer design standards, our, our staff will make certain that that's put in place. So maybe the only consideration uh, back in then was the thoughts about future drainage off of the school property. I got you. Okay. Mr. Egan, do you going to deal with anything different? I don't remember anything. Um, very typically, from the PNZ level, we never got feedback from council whenever they asked for more things to happen. Uh, so, if it was put on there, account, then this note appears to be something from council level. So, gotcha. Council, are there additional questions for staff? Mayor, I, I did have one question, um, and I think it ties into uh, what Mr. Wade was mentioning. It has to do with the drainage. Uh, it's, it's not a secret that we have drainage issues off that corner uh, between the school and the trip and the culvert. And I know you made reference they'll have to go back and they'll have to draw that, but I, I think it's worthy to note that we should all be concerned that whatever is drawn for drainage takes into heavy consideration the amount of water that comes off and how it impacts those roads, those lots down the road. I know you will, Rashad. I just want to be sure that we, we're not approaching this these lots blindly. There's a lot of water that comes through there, and it's going it's to require... Uh, effort on the staff and effort on the developer to, to be sure that we mitigate the water as it traverses from high to low through that area. Well, our, our town staff, building permit, I mean, building official and town engineer law will definitely assure that that is done correctly. He's, told that. <laughs> <laughs> He's on yeah. top of all that. Lyle. Poor Lyle. Thank you, Lyle. Okay, applicant is here. Do you have any question for the applicant? Would you like to add anything, sir? Thank you very much. Uh, okay, we'll ask for public comments if there are any. Um, I'll take at this time. No one is coming forward, so I'm going to close the public hearing. Council, are there additional discussions on this topic? The, the only thing that I have is, you know, as they start to move the dirt around, if there are additional costs that are created to make sure that the drainage stays the way it is, those are not going to be costs that the city's going to take on, I'm assuming. That's going to land on on the developer, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. Good question. Okay. If there are no other discussions, can I have a motion with respect to Agenda item number four. I'll make a motion to approve agenda item four as presented. Motion made by Mayor Proctor Finch to approve item number four as presented. Mayor, I'll Se second. Second by Mr. Allen. Everyone heard the motion? Are there additional discussions? All in favor signify. All opposed? Motion passed 7 0. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Everything's gone. Moving on to agenda item number five. That is to discuss and consider and act upon a request by Irma Acosta to approve a site plan for the Charalas Plaza at or about 3401 Bell Line Road. Mr. Jackson. Mayor Council, as you know, this is a site plan request for the Charalas Plaza. Uh, the site is approximately 5.73 acres in size, located at the southwest 
intersection uh, of Beltline Road and Town East Boulevard. It's currently undeveloped, um, heavily treed. Uh, there is an existing home on the site that will be demolished prior to construction. Um, the proposed uses, as shown on the site plan and noted by the applicant, are, no, are allowed by right outside of those that will require a drive through. Um, so they're looking at doing restaurants and uh, retail in, in, the, in the location. The restaurants will likely be located on the ends where you see the drive through access. Um, the lots straddles lots two and three of the Berean, the existing Berean Baptist edition. The property will be required to be replatted prior to construction to create a single lot. Um, the ac applicant is also proposing to use uh, a pr access through Ben's Tire, uh, primarily due to the distance requirements for driveways, and this will actually help them provide another access point um, for Ben's Tire as well as the retail establishments within that proposed development. Uh, the, the building overall square footage is 38,000 square feet, designed in an L, L shape facing Town East Boulevard. Um, the facade is articulated and the front top parapet is articulated as well. Um, staff will note that the front art, uh, parapet will be masonry uh, and match the surrounding building. Uh, the rear portions, um, there will be lattice, wood lattice screening, screening the actual AC units or any mechanical units in the rear. But from the front, you'll see the masonry uh, screening those units. Um, all other requirements adhere to the town requirements and town UDO requirements. Um, the PNZ Commission reviewed this item and had no comments and um, approved the uh, submittal as, uh, the request as submitted. And, and staff recommends approval. Continue to addressing the minor comment with regard to um, a replat prior to construction and revising the site plan to remove a, a minor typo lot line on the plan. So, okay, uh, Rashad, on the item number one, staff recommendation says all comments from the town engineer shall be addressed prior to final approval by town council. Correct. Is, is that already addressed? Yes, yes. I mean, the only minor one is the, the lot line. And that's more of a, they could resubmit that tomorrow, um, removing that lot line. Okay. And their request is for the, uh, for the shell at this time, right? And when they Correct. add the construction, they come back? Well, this, it'll be, this is for just approval of the, the site plan exterior portions. They had to come back and do a replat okay. in order to create the single lot. Um, and then we'll move forward with the actual building permit process. They'll likely have to do some soil testing out there. We had a brief discussion um, prior, during, in the midst of all this, so it may require a few trees being removed so they can get to the actual site where the, the foundation is going to be. So it'll be a little difficult with it being so heavily wooded. So I just wanted to give council advance notice on that. But outside of that, um, that would be the typical process. So the commissioner has the same requirement as a replacement, tree replacement? when they remove the wooded, clear the wooded area? Well, this process here, the site plan process itself, required a tree survey and tree mitigation plan, which is the landscape plan that you see. So every, all the landscaping that you see mitigates those trees that will be removed. They're just gonna have to, prior to, it's really on, based on their timing, and they can probably address it better than I can. They're gonna have to go through and um, do soil testing likely prior to replatting to know where exactly to put certain things, utilities, foundations, things like that. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Council question for Mr. Jackson. Rashad, is this going to have a, a drive access to Town East? Yes. Okay. Is a and is that going to require a, a replat of the Berean property? Well, the, the site itself will require a replat but there is still a 60-foot access easement directly south of this site. Um, the idea would be to eventually use, use that if the, the portions of, that are further away from Town East develop. Um, so this is not going to get on any of the Smith property? The Smith property, the existing home that's there to the south. 
the quick cash store and and the lot next door to it to the west mm -hmm. none of that's going to cross that property it's going to be west of that smith property between the smith property mr right. Barrett? where ben's uh when ben's uh, lee's barbecue stand used to be oh yeah vacant lot there so is this going to be on any of that property not that I'm aware no, of the no. driveway or anything no okay can I answer a question hmm. council additional question for Mr. Jackson what's the county's access to um, if you look at the site plan it's right I may be able to show you Because Rashad did sell townies earlier. Yeah. <laughs> so it's built line. It's okay, built so line. there is no, no access to townies. No. Okay. The, no. The so That's my problem. So the there's that parking lot there in the back. There's not going to be a cut through coming in from the back. So there's the parking lot coming in from there's town east. Well, I think the original understanding was they were going to use some of the Berean property to access town east that, that was have been very preliminary and preliminary idea was to do that um, but I don't think they it's not shown here yeah they weren't able to work that out okay with the other property owners okay thank you so then they won't use any of the Smith property or anything no okay got you the applicant is here Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm representing Herbal Costa. I'm an engineer in training. I've been working on this. Do you mind using the mi microphone? Maybe it's difficult. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, sure. okay. so, uh, I'm not sure what kind of questions I might be able to answer. Do you, have it? Do you want to add anything? Um, I have nothing to add unless you have any more questions. Okay. And the question was about the access. It is accessing only Bedline, not Townies, correct? Correct. Okay. Council question for the applicant. I think this is good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Council other additional discussions on this topic. Okay. If not, can I have a motion with respect to agenda item number five? Motion to approve agenda item number five as written. Motion made by Mr. Freeman to approve Agenda item number five was presented. Second. Second by Mr. Clark. Everyone heard the motion? Are there additional discussions? All in favor signify. All opposed. Motion passed 7 0. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Mayor, might we ask a kind of time frame on this? Uh, Maybe this, Mr. and Mrs. Trellis might give us some idea of one or two years or quicker. Would you mind using the mic for me, please? Thanks. The plan is to start us um, as early as we can, but it has already been a year since we have been working to get to this point uh, with all the trees and you know all kinds of issues. But I think it's a good point where we are that you know the site plan being approved, and uh, the next thing is to get access to soil testing. The drawings and everything is kind of, you know, being worked by Eric Davis Engineering. So that's that's all being worked on. So as soon as we get the approvals, we can go and go to the next step. So we're closer. So once everything goes smooth, it's going to go, you know, fast. So Your potential clients already identified? Uh, we have a few. We have spoke with uh, several people, uh, like businesses, looking for more of retail, um, small shops like bakeries or you know, eateries and then other retail you know, uh, clients. How many clients do you anticipate? Mm. Maybe it's too early to say. Yeah, it's a little bit too early, but you know, the, with the square feet, about 30, 38,000 square feet, maybe like 1,000, 1,500. Uh, small businesses mostly, okay. that's what they go by. Okay. So, 30, and then restaurants, maybe. depending upon what kind they want to be. Uh, with the drive-through, we are looking for one fast food and maybe one sit-up style on both ends. So that's one thing that will determine how much space they need. And then the rest, 
we will go by as you know we get the we get the tenants. Good luck. Okay, Thanks. thank you. Excellent. Excited for you. Okay, moving on to the finance portion of the agenda. That's item number six. Presentation of the 2019-2020 proposed budget. Focus upon capital improvement projects, debt services, road impact and water and sewer impact funds. Ms. Hopkins. Mayor and Council, I'm gonna be starting on page um, 33 of the packet. Just to go through the budget schedule, we are now obviously at July 8th. Um, this is our public hearing, and um, as you mentioned, the CIP debt service and the impact fund budgets. <clears throat> On page 34 is a corrected page. I apologize. I had a typo in my utility fund budget, <clears throat> and it uh, c created some confusion. The calculations that I presented to you were correct but this number I had it transposed is 371 so this is just a correction page for your reference <coughs> Excuse me. page 35 this is your general fund CIP five-year plan you've seen this many times the plan was developed on uh, or adopted on June 24th we have fully funded the Collins Road phase one project the police force capital needs is within the CIP at a $3,500,000 level. We have the drainage um, and Collins Road engineering that we expect to pay for with certificates of obligation. We have the fire station, the animal control at $5,750,000. Those are gonna be general obligations. And then we have major road improvements. Um, will issue uh, general, uh, excuse me, certificates of obligation once we determine what that need is. Again, page 36, I believe you've seen this before. This is just the outline of the timing of these projects, the sources of funds and the uses of funds. And stop me if you have questions, I'm just gonna keep going. <coughs> You have page 37, this is where your utility fund CIP comes in. This again was adopted on June 24, 2019. This is your Harris line, uh, sewer line replacement phases one and two. These are gonna be funded in, with certificates of obligation and they are funded with water and wastewater rates. The transition to Dallas County water utilities remains that debt is authorized but unissued, and it will also be paid with water and wastewater rate. Page 38 is the Gantt chart on those projects. Page 39 goes into your debt service. Right now, these numbers are very preliminary. We made some assumptions when we were putting this preliminary budget together. The first, we used the same um, estimated taxable value that Hilltop Security used in their tax rate impact analysis so that we're all using the same value. This is very close to what I'm seeing out on DCAD. We were at about a billion four. They update that just about every day, and it's down to about this, three, this one million three. Uh, 336 number but that number is going to continue to change until they actually certify and that's going to be on July 25th so as soon as that number comes in we will make that available and certification we'll, means all the protest everything is all right it's it's a statutory deadline for them and in theory all your protests are in um, I would have to defer to DCAD as far as but those those are the numbers that you're going to use okay you, you might have some uh, capped loss, uh, some things like that that will also go into your levy. Uh, it's all outlined in the, in, in the certified levy. So <clears throat> you ultimately get two things. You get a certified value and you get a certified levy. The value is the taxable value. The levy is the actual amount of money 
that you are going to get in property taxes. Gotcha. We um, put the INS rate at the 0.997 to include the three million five in tax notes to get it into this year's tax rate. We're gonna put a 97% collection rate in there. Another thing that this 97% collection rate helps us with is again, those late protests, uh, capped loss, just a little, those things that come up uh, and that are adjusted by Dallas County through what they call journal entries throughout the year. And uh, we're expecting the ending fund balance for the debt service to be uh, approximately $318,000. Page 40 outlines where all that debt is. And you can see the calculation uh, there at the top, right where, under where it says revenues. And that uh, lines up with what Hilltop has on their tax impact analysis sheet. Remind me again, the, under the uh, revenue, fire engine and ambulance. That, that is more an accounting entry than anything. The, the um, fire truck and the ambulance are actually supported by the vehicle replacement plan. Okay. But the auditors like to see that debt going into debt service and coming out of debt service. It does not affect your INS rate. It's dollar for dollar. Gotcha. Page 41 is your road impact funds. <coughs> The assumptions that we made on this fund, and we have in pretty much the last three or four years, is that 100 permits will be pulled. It depends on the building activity. Usually we do a little better than that, but we're trying to stay conservative. But your monthly reports will track anything that's going outside of those 100, those 100 permits. And the rate at which those we think those are going to come in at is the 2,654,008. The road impact fees are currently funding a portion of the Collins Road uh, Phase 1 intersection project. And the decrease between the prior year and this year is that we had some lands that were platted between 2007 and 2015 that commanded a higher impact rate. And those have pretty much been built out, so we're not seeing that rate come in. you have any questions on that. The road impact fund also is where the Stony Creek traffic mitigation money lives and it is also helping to finish the Collins Road intersection and we expect that to have an ending fund balance of about $290,000. Page 42 are is the numbers. Or the details. The same is true, I'm going on to page 43 now. The same is true for the water and sewer. Again, we're expecting um, 100 permits. You can see the rates at which we think those are gonna come in. And again, same thing about the decrease. It's the timing of the platting of some of the subdivisions. We expect that to have a funding balance, <coughs> excuse me, ending funding fund balance of about $119,000. And 44 is, is there a separate your permit for the sewer, water and sewer? Is that the one? There are two numbers there? Yes, sir. Okay. 44 is your details. Um, page 45 says ENCODE reports. I put those at the very end so it wouldn't create confusion so we could go right into the tax rate discussion. But they are back there. So if you have any questions on those, let me know. Page 46 is where we start the tax rate discussion. You have probably seen these slides before. I think we've used them in another presentation, but we felt that they would help us walk forward with this discussion. So we are looking at the current payoff of existing debt if we didn't borrow any more money and what the effect of borrowing the three million five for the police force. We have a current principal outstanding of $8,830,000. We have a current INS rate of 0.073755.
I'm on page 48. Page 48 is just a graph showing you that if you don't borrow any more money by 2037, you will have paid all your debt off. Page 49 is the effect of borrowing $3 million five with tax notes. Those are the assumptions there is, uh, again, I'm using uh, the same growth rates that Hilltop Security used so that we could all be, you know, using the same assumptions. Uh, tax notes are a seven-year term, and it would increase the INS rate uh, by two, 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 two and a half cents. And then it would slowly go down after that if you didn't borrow any more money. And you can see, because there's seven year, it really starts to dip in the 2026 um, time frame. The next slide, page 50. This is if you left your I, your uh, M&O rate right where it is, um, but we're but we're not going to do that because that would create a nine percent increase in revenues, and that's not that's not going to happen. So that's what the butt weight means. So if we can move on to page 51. So we looked at it, we tried to look at it from an 8% growth, which is what we think we're going to get this year. So the first assumption says, if you take the m and rate to the projected 8% rollback rate, and I calculated that, and I hope it's right, but that number may change with valuation. The rate goes, uh, the M&O rate goes from 0 0.3391, which it is currently, to 0 0.3350, and that's due to compression. Because if you had gotten the benefit of all your increase in taxable value, you would have had a 9% increase, but it was compressed down. When added to the new INS rate at 0 0.0997, the new combined rate will be 0.4347 uh, from 0.4129 in the current year. This will cost, and I have a typo, the average homeowner will pay $76.30 additional per year, not 73.30. And I, again, I apologize. Next year, the M&O rate will compress further with the 3.5% revenue cap. Any questions on this one? I, I was really wanting to try to be as clear as I could here. So if there's any questions, way I can improve on this so that we can keep moving forward, let me know. This, this is a great summary, at least for me. <laughs> right, the correct level of detail, but not too much. And, and Liz, you backed into this by using the 8% revenue yes. allowance. Yes, based on the valuations that, again, Hilltop had in right. their tax rate summary or tax rate impact analysis. So, so we've got the given of <coughs> projected values. Yes. But you, you solved on what it would require to have the 8% revenue allowance right. right okay this is this is my attempt to calculate the effective uh, excuse me the roll the m and rollback rate is what it is and when we get that calculation from dallas county we'll see it if you know how close we come to that if it's higher then your numbers will come down so the total will be uh, mm -hmm. next year, hopefully we, we know that lineage is not in here, correct? There's no way that new building is on the road right. yet, correct? I, I would say that's a true statement. Fifty-two, I apologize. I don't know that anybody could read this page. Just one second. So, Mr. Wade, lineage will be a benefit for us in the future, but for this year, really, does make a difference, right? No, it doesn't make a difference this year because we've got the 8% allowance. Right. The next year, when we have the 3.5% allowance and lineage and QT, 
and whatever else on stream, we're going to see a big reduction, a forced reduction in tax M and O. Is that maybe year after? Maybe it's 2021, 2020, 2020, 2021. We we get one day break, right? Yeah, it, yeah it'll be year. when we're here next year. You're exactly right. When we're sitting here next year, we'll and, see it. And we still think there's a five hundred thousand dollar allowance, oh, in addition, <coughs> not in addition to. Um, either or, three point five or five hundred thousand, that we'll be able to take advantage of. But what you're seeing here is we're raising the tax rate. without with a, a higher cap yeah. and this small amount of debt which we're going to do this year yeah. Yeah, it's not very much to a taxpayer you know we're talking eight dollars a month maybe less than that six dollars a month so, so let me, maybe but it's it is a tax rate increase which we really hope to avoid Once we set the pay payment terms, can we split it up? No, you can't split this up because speed we're speed it up. Oh, speed it up. Oh, you can always prepay debt. I don't know if you prepay tax notes or not. Can you prepay tax notes? I would imagine so, imagine so. I'd have to verify no, that I don't know because if you can in Texas, tax notes. But how much year? This is seven year debt because <coughs> that's the way tax notes are done and we've chosen to go with tax notes as the easiest and you can't do COs for this correct well we could but the reason why we didn't go that direction and I mean we can revisit it and split it but certain things that are going to be bought with this money only have a life expectancy of that so it would be strange to you know to you know finance something that's going to not have that shelf life, i.e. a vehicle or so something CO, like that. So what is the duration again? What's the maximum? Seven years on no, the tax CO. note. CO. Or CO's. CO's. It's, it's 20, 20 to 25. 25. So, so. 30. So you just wouldn't want to finance a, a car for 30, for 30 years. years. Please. Yeah. But, me, uh, I mean, we could look at splitting the amount and doing you know, doing it separately, but then you get into transaction costs right. mm -hmm. as so, well. So, so let me ask you though. Mm -hmm. So it's a very brought up a good point, right? Yes, so sir. there's gonna be some additional taxable value increase and that mm -hmm. has got its implications. But opportunities for us to adjust the INS rate accordingly. Is it recommended or is it is it feasible for us to issue a CEO? For seven year, yeah. I mean, for the same time, if, if I understand, you don't want to pay something as a life expectancy of seven years. You, you don't want to pay over 10, 30 years. I got it. Mm -hmm. But can we then, when we have that INS flexibility, we know it's going to happen, right? Because mm -hmm. QT is coming. We know the lineage no, no, is coming. I, I think we need to use these tax notes when they're available to us for this particular use okay. and save our CO uh, commitments to the longer projects such as drainage and fire station and okay. things like that that we're going to need to do and I don't know that you're going to do COs for fire station we may do bonds but uh, I think th this police study needs to be with the tax notes because it's it's now and it needs to be doesn't need to be stretched out over 30 years but we're going to be paying for a police department for 30 years but can can we uh, again this is uh, just a question right can we do CO for a short period of time or do we have a limit well, on we'll how many CEOs get a better, doesn't matter. we'll probably get a better interest rate on tax notes uh, Liz than we do on COs probably because they're tied because to revenues the, right and depending on the timing of the market right yeah, well you know always. Yeah. You, you can get those but COs out there in private place fairly, I'm not COs, the tax notes, you can you can make those happen fairly quickly. You don't have to go through a lot of ratings calls and things like that. So, um, you know, right now they're talking about lowering interest rates. So, 
I'm not the, requesting. I'm just trying yeah, to no, look no. for options, right? Yeah, but the CEOs are not tied to revenues. The CEOs are also tied to the revenues. CEOs are tied to general fund. Total revenues, okay. tax notes, or tax revenues. And they both come out of affect the INS rate. So either way, it's still affecting the INS rate. The only difference really is the duration of how long we would spread out to right. prepay. But I, I think the one piece that's at least has not been mentioned yet is we are expecting in year two a much more dramatic compression of the M&O rate because um, Mr. Reed was exactly right that when we add on more value and more value, the way that you come to your rate is the value times the rate equals the revenue. And so and if your values go up, you, we can only raise the revenue by 3.5%. Okay, so we can only raise the revenue by 3.5%. Sure. So as those values go up, it's, it's going to drive our rate yeah. down. So although we'll have a, the increase this year, we believe that next year, if you didn't add anything else, but we are planning to add other things, but we believe that next year, you know, the, the rate's going to go down on the M&O side. But that's an opportunity for the which is what we're we're backing into with this step. I mean, it's a, it's an opportunity and it's a challenge because you have the opportunity to to have capacity in your INS rate, but you're putting value and businesses and you know services needed, and you're saying to provide those services you have to do it at three and a half percent, and. You know, but that's a different challenge. Uh, that is that is controlled by somebody else, right? Right, and so, and there's yeah, there's yeah, we, we should have paid first, but it's three point five. We got it. Now the question is, can we turn the challenge into an opportunity? That's the, really the challenge for us, in my opinion, is going to be whether we're going to keep the tax rate where it is today, right. or we're going to let it drift upward a little bit uh, yeah. before we have the real challenge with the 3.5 and yeah. lineage at out coming on because our values are going to go up significantly that year plus all the houses that are being built right now which aren't on the tax rolls yeah. but if you're saying that we have to to fund this now we need to raise the INS rate to fund this now Correct. And then there's an opportunity once we evaluate once we see the impact of those numbers to reevaluate next year and go hey we can lower this back down maybe even below where we are now and, and do something like that. But I think the, the bigger point is that, and I know you're not arguing this, is to make the point that, that we're to a point now where we have to do something with this, right? We have to have, we have to invest this dollar. So yes, this year we're going to have to go up on the tax rate, right? I and, mean, and it's not just the police study. It's, right. We've had a community, a community committee that's laid out for us very vividly what our commitment is in capital improvements. Right. And we've got to start someday. Yeah. Exactly. Nobody likes raising it takes taxes. money. We don't like it. But we're to the point now to where we've, we've had to make some hard decisions based on the things that we're presented with. And so, I mean, we've talked a lot of time about this. And nobody likes it. But we knew it was coming. And so we're, we're having to pay up on this thing. And so... I think it's going to be easy to explain. No, it, it is easy to explain. None of us it's like it. I want you to understand, just easier to explain. I hope, that, I hope that, to your point, after we're able to see the full impact of some of these developments that are coming in next year, that we'll be able to lower that INS rate back down. I mean, that's the hope. We can't promise it, but that's the hope, right, is that we're able to do that. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's frustrating, but it's where we are. And we'll know more once we get uh, certified values. That's right. Yeah. So, um, any questions on page 51? Uh, th this is an important chart, I think. If, if anyone has questions or comments, this may be an opportunity. This is an important chart. She's laying the foundation for the uh, next several weeks' discussions. So. Yeah. And I'm, all, you know, you can always. You, if if you're like me, you wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, you have that, that question. So certainly just send them to Susan, and we'll, we'll turn around. Not at 2 o'clock. 2.30 maybe, not 2 o'clock. <laughs> but, but anytime, just send them to Susan, and we'll get you an answer. So. 
page 52 again this is I, I apologize for this being so difficult to read but this is the tax impact analysis that Hilltop Security did and I did get all my numbers from this and I would be happy to get a better PDF and provide it to you if if that will help you walk through this process so the the column C that's the assessed value anticipated growth over the years is that right that's correct okay. yeah that I of taxable value the base increase right and, and that's pretty much is spot on right now is it Your, your values always start to come down as we go th again through those processes. You know, okay. they come out really one, one billion four hundred, and and then all of a sudden it starts. I have my calculation shows that where you start that first preliminary estimated value report, you are going to lose six percent at least by the time we go through everything. Okay. I think these numbers are good. We've used them for a long time. We understand what they are. But I'm concerned that Lupton Farms is not in these growth numbers. Because it's going to come in in five years or so, and it's going to take some kind of a spike, and uh, it's going to continue for uh, several years. I mean, you know, I'm not going to say it's a 10 year project. It, but I'm concerned that Lift and Forms is not in these growth projections. And I don't know that Liz can do anything about that. I think we just have to recognize that um, we're going to continue to build Stony Creek, Homestead, these other areas that are building. But at some point, we're going to have a jab from Lift and Forms. Yeah, I think that's a great point because I didn't even catch that. that you have all those homes coming in that will definitely impact this. At some rate. point. Yeah, you're exactly right. I don't have anything further unless y'all have some questions. And again, depending on our next meeting is going to be July 22nd. So we will not have our certified roles at that point, And we will be going into the general fund and the EDCs. So we will keep you updated as best we can as these numbers move around. I don't, personally, I don't believe they're gonna be significant. I think this is a good base to start with, to start thinking about where you want that tax rate to be. Your INS will be what it has to be, up to 2.5%, 1.5 by charter. So your INS rate can be what you want it to be. If you want to borrow more money, but it's going to compress, your m and is going to be compressed by stat, statute, and it will be further compressed by your desire to keep that interest, or that tax rate as low as possible. Yeah. And that, I so, think, is the challenge, is maintenance and operation, you know, just keeping the status quo yeah. on, on services. Mr. Finch. Uh, Liz, I just want to thank you for the presentation. I think it's awesome. Point on is I think somebody already made the point, so appreciate you spending time on that and making it as succinct for us novices that try and understand city city budget. So I appreciate that. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Susan and Liz, is there there's a lot of time difference between seven twenty two and eight twelve. So I'm wondering if as soon as you get those certified values and have a chance to rework the numbers. Mm -hmm. Can you give us some kind of a, a draft of what you think it looks like? I mean, I, I know you'll get it to us before the 812 meeting, but I wouldn't mind if I had a copy as soon as you've got it so I could start studying it. Yes, it would be nice. Is it possible we'll get those uh, numbers before 725? That's just the deadline. That's, that's the statutory deadline they give them to us. We can't control that. But they could give them to us before that, though. Right? No. They can, but they won't. Uh, yeah, I don't think they will. Uh, I don't know what Liz's relationship is with them, but I don't think you're going to get them before 725. 
I, I, it is my experience that as soon as they have them in hand and as soon as they feel that they're validated, they will send them out to us, but no later than July 25th. That's been my experience. So if I get them sooner, I will let you know. Ms. Aino, Mr. Wade and Mr. Freeman appreciate the data on 53 to 61. Page 50. What I do? Yeah. <laughs> and you guys appreciate this data here. All okay. well, the fine prints. Oh. Susan, this was a discussion, right? There are no actions out of at this time. Council, are there any, any, any thoughts or discussion, or any, any um, different ideas or considerations on the direction staff is proposing? I think the staff's an outstanding job. I, I think the challenge will be if the town becomes uh, uh, involved, I'm not sure if that's the right word, we want them to be involved, is trying to explain to them what just happened in legislation and where we have to be today and where we have to be tomorrow, that will be a challenge that will, will be hard to meet. Friends will be on our side, I'm sure. But I mean, as I'm looking at 2020, 2020 seems like it's pretty well in hand. We kind of have a really good understanding. 2021 is the year that I think is the, is the one where we're just kind of all kind of gearing up towards. I mean, we know that we've got some other stuff that's going to be coming, hitting in 2021 as far as, you know, possible debt that we're going to be placing on, but also with the, the m and cut in the I, I mean, that's, it would, whenever projections, and I, don't, I don't even know when we start planning those projections, but I think that's the year that everyone's kind of concerned about at this point. I think we've got a, a tremendous challenge ahead of us. I think the media and perhaps the legislature did a very poor job of giving the public what is going to happen this year. Everybody thinks that the legislature cut taxes, and they didn't. They didn't do anything with regards to this coming fiscal year. It was to 2020, 2021 that they made the cuts, but they're not tax cuts. They're revenue cuts, and those are not the same. So I think we're going to have a tremendous challenge, number one, and even saying that we're going to maintain the tax rate because everybody's looking for a cut and and we don't control values so they their tax bill may go up even if we left the tax rate the same if we raise the tax rate their bill is still going to go up based on valuation and i think we've got to be prepared for those challenges that are going to come to us because again i don't think the media and the legislature did us any favors with this and it's not going to be just Sunnyvale. It's going to be every city. And some of the counties are going to be impacted even higher well, and, and to a greater county, extent than... Counties, hospital districts, everybody who raises taxes are going to have the same issue. Yeah. I think that, that somewhere in the middle of all this, we need to be sure that our, our senior residents realize that at 65, their rates are locked. Am I right? The rates are the value. The rates, not the valuation. The valuation changes, but the tax rate... Schools... Are locked. Schools are locked. Not the town. The towns are not. The town gets an exemption, but the, t the rates are the taxes are not locked at the city. They're locked at the school. They they have a va a tax ceiling on their value. Tax taxing ta dollar uh, value. Right? right. They have a they have a ceiling. If you're 65 and older, you hit a certain. Let when you turn 65. Your value stays there. Okay, so the taxable value doesn't go up, but if the tax rate goes up, you're going to pay more taxes. Okay. The property value is saved. Correct. That's my thought. Well, that does happen automatically, too, as a matter of fact. They don't have to file paperwork for it generally, which is why. Okay. Uh, I think you do have to file paperwork. You have to get the age 65 exemption. Because the county doesn't know what age you are. Oddly enough, when I checked with last year for my mom, they somehow they know that. Oh, really? Not, there's probably some people that slipped through the crack. You're right, but generally well, there is a process for filing an age 65 exemption. They figure that out. There, you got a long way to go, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> my mom, remember? My mom. That's why I said I was very careful with that statement. All right.
good discussion, really, really good discussion. This are typically long, tough discussion, but please, great job, Susan. Really good job in uh, and working with uh, everybody. Moving on to the town manager portion of the agenda. Disc item number seven, discuss, consider, and act upon the first reading of ordinance 19-17, an ordinance of the town of Sunnyvale, Texas, established in the town of Sunnyvale Police Department, providing for the appointment and qualifications of police officers, establishing a reserve police force, repealing conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Ms. Black. Mayor and Council, in your packet is the draft of the ordinance to create the police department. As you all know, we had a committee um, look at our options for law enforcement services. They recommended um, that we stand up our own police department. You've taken several actions over the last several meetings to do so. This ordinance is a requirement of state law and TCOL, the licensing agency for police departments in the state of Texas. Um, we have sent it to them for their review. Um, just want to make you all aware of that. Um, one thing to note, it does provide for the creation of a reserve police force. We realize that won't be necessary right at the beginning, but it does give the chief the option to do so in the future. Um, the local government code is very specific about that language, so we went ahead and included it so that we wouldn't have to change later. But other than that, um, the police chief is set to be an employee of the town, just like all other employees, and established in the Home Rule Charter. Staff's happy to answer any questions. So it does identify the chief as an employee of the town, like all other employees, and uh, will be under the Home Rule Charter requirements as well. on this agenda item. If not, uh, this is the first reading, but can I have a motion with respect to agenda item number seven? Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to approve agenda item seven as presented. Motion made by Mayor Proton Finch to approve agenda item seven as presented. Is there a second? Mayor, I'll second. Motion made by Mr. Finch Seconded by Allen to approve Ordinance 19-17 as presented. Everyone heard the motion? All in favor signify. All opposed, motion passed 7-0. Uh, Rachel, since this is a critical item, I'm going to bring it as a, a discussion item again, not a consent agenda item. Let's go through the discussions. Moving on to item number eight, council to discuss Consider and act upon, act to make a recommendation to staff on future actions related to sales tax utilization. Ms. Guthrie. Thank you, Mayor and Council. As you all are aware, um, this year the sales tax uh, for street maintenance expired. And so, you know, we've communicated that to Council and we've advised both Council and 4A that the council will need to consider how to fund street maintenance moving forward. Um, it's estimated in the state that less than 10% of cities have both a 4A and a 4B. And as you all know, you were um, allocating a portion of what would be 4A funds um, towards street maintenance, but that now has expired. So. What we're coming before you today is just to talk about all the options that are available to you. And you know, we're not asking for any kind of vote tonight, but just to give us some direction on what you'd like to see us to bring back to you for the future. So um, right now, our current sales tax framework is that one cent of the sales tax goes to the town general fund, one half cent to 4B for economic development, parks, quality of life, 
and one half cent to 4A for economic development activities. That's the way it stands right now, but there are many options available to the city to consider. So I'm just gonna walk through those for you very briefly, um, and I'm happy to answer as many questions as I can, but here's kind of a summary of things that I think um, we may be wanting to consider. First, council could take no action and the budget will continue as described above. Number two, council could pass an ordinance to hold an election to, here's option one, create a street maintenance sales tax in increments of one quarter cent and the overall sales tax remains the same. I think that's one thing I just really want to say for the public's benefit. None of this is about raising taxes. The consumer will see no impact. This is really a matter of when it comes to the town, how is it allocated and in what funds? I just want to make that really clear because it gets a little scary when we talk about how we're using these funds. So, so that was the first option. There was do nothing or create a street maintenance sales tax. Number, um, the next option would be to abolish the foray to leave only one economic development corporation, which would be the 4B. And the reason why that would be proposed rather than abolishing 4B is by state law, 4B can do almost everything, and as far as I know, everything that a 4A can do. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. So you, that's why you wouldn't abolish the 4B because in a town of our size, 4B can do what 4A does. So abolish 4A to leave only one econom economic development corporation and allocate that half cent of the existing sales tax to the general fund to be used for street maintenance and funding the new police department. Again, the overall sales tax remains the same. So we'd be taking it from economic development, using it for street maintenance and the police department. Another option would be to create a crime prevention district through a local election. This option requires creation of a new board and has time limitations and expenditures are limited to those outlined in the local government code and I've noted the location of that. So those were the, the kind of best scenarios, everything from do nothing to abolishing the foray and things in between. Um, the fiscal impact in this section I thought was really important because it's dovetailing on your discussion you had with budget, which was anything we do right now in the next month um, is really almost like a, a almost a nine month lag because whatever election you you all would pass an ordinance, we'd hold an election um, in November. Well, we wouldn't start making the changes to how funding is allocated until likely May or June of next year because it takes that long to work its way through the comptroller. So that's why we're really looking at this right now. And a lot of it is in preparation for what you all were talking about in the next budget year when we're facing the 3.5% compression. We wanna make sure that we have funding streams allocated. Um, a couple of other things, we have $2.5 million right now in the 4A budget, in the 4A um, fund balance. If you were to um, uh, do away with the 4A, those funds would come to the city after all of their commitments and debts are paid off. So about 1.8 million would come to general fund and I, I've had um, individuals um, some of you individually have said, if that were to happen, we'd be interested in earmarking that money for future economic development incentives so that that money would still be there and the city is able to enter into those agreements as well, um, even without the foray. Um, so those are the options. I have attached the local sales tax option pamphlet from the Texas Comptroller so that you can read through those on your own. But um, I just wanted to outline those and give you an opportunity for discussion and to give staff direction on how you would like us to come back. Council discussions. Certainly, I'm probably the last one who wants to do away with 4A, but uh, it is a duplication of some of our economic development options or work. 
which 4B can do. Uh, the pressures that we're going to have, as Susan explained, with the uh, tax rate caps, this could be general fund revenues that are not subject to the cap, which would allow us to allocate them to other things, even including what she said, street maintenance and police department, but other m and type operations. Uh, I'm certainly in favor of the recommendation that we hold their unspent reserve as additional economic development dollars. Um, I think this would be an easy thing to explain to our residents as we do an election. So even though I hate to do away with 4A, I think this is a, a really good opportunity for us to do something that we can do without any detriment to anything we're doing now. Mr. Freeman? Um, I would absolutely agree with what Mr. Wade was saying. I mean, as I look at these options, um, the C option just doesn't make much sense. It seems like we're spinning our wheels, um, creating something new that at the end of the day is going to be more hassle. I, I kind of look at the fact that we're going to have to have a police department and we're going to have to fund that police department and that increase in what we're actually going to have to spend for that would be a great allocation for additional funds. Um, that's, that's my initial, my initial thought is that, you know, if we do have duplication and 4B can do everything that 4A can do, that having two separate economic development committees might not be the best use of our resources. We might need clarity on exactly what number two was with regards to uh, C, because my understanding is that A, B, and C would all basically go together in that discussion. Am I? Um, no. What the reason those are grouped together is because all of those require an election. So it was. Um, if you were to pass an ordinance to hold an election, that's the only way you could do any of those that are listed below that. So you could just do A, um, you could just do B, or you could just do C. Or, or you could you do the could, combination of... You could do a combination of like A and C, or just do A in different increments. Okay, so, that's, that's yeah, where I wanted to be sure I was A little at. bit of an a la carte there. Right, okay. Mr. Finch, Susan, can you, I know you put the section in there, but in reference to C, can you tell me what are the limitations on C? Like, can we pay, like, what can we not pay for? I know I'm putting you on the spot, and I yeah, apologize for I, that, but. It's okay, and I don't know all the limitations off the top of my head. I'm going to look over at David. David, do you have? Okay. Sorry, David, I'm putting you on this spot now, but I don't know them off the top of my head. Like, like major things, like payroll is going to be a major thing, and it's equipment limited to what major. you can so, do. I think it says what you can do. Let me see if I can look it up real quick. Okay. Um, while you're doing that, i make a few comments. Um, I struggle with a couple of things. I don't disagree with you at all, Jim, on the revenue side of the issue. I, I am concerned a couple of things about we're, we're playing to what we don't know, and so I'm a little bit concerned about that because we don't know what the future brings, and so we're taking a body of uh, very involved people and those dollars from potential incentives and diverting it to the general fund. And so it I'm a little bit. I have. I struggle with that a little bit. I struggle with that 
um, diversion of dollars to the unknown because I think I think to some extent we can be um, we can play to some of that fear a little bit because it is unknown but I also realize that whatever we do we're kind of locked into for a while and so if it does come true that we need these funds then now we've locked ourselves into less flexibility and so I'm, I'm concerned about that as well because I, I think we're going to need we need to be able to provide these services that are key um, I mean what, what do we hear about streets and public safety right those are the things infrastructure and public safety and so I struggle with that a little bit as well um, that aside with the 1.2 million that we'd have left I do agree we should earmark that I also would throw out an idea because of the amount of resource we have and talent in town, if we wouldn't look at possibly, and I don't know the logistics, so I'm, I'm spitballing here a little bit, so apologize for that, about uh, since we're going to have a body that's going to be potentially abolished, that we appoint a economic uh, incentive committee to help us with that $1.2 million. That way we still have some citizens that have some say, so I don't know if that's doable or not, but we'd have a group of people that could help us still direct those dollars and Tracy I have no idea what your thoughts are on that but I'm spitballing here because I want to have I want to make sure that we keep our residents those people involved that we have that we have a community say in how that's done and so um, just throwing that out I'm not sure I have a clear I'd like to hear more about what we're limited on as far as okay. from this fund the, the first step is on if you start a crime control prevention district, you have to come up with a plan for the first two years and a budget and the goals. And then you have to also, of the plan, you have to identify what you're trying to accomplish, different things and different tasks. And you have to set up a process to evaluate that each year to make sure it's being addressed and doesn't need to be amended. That's the first step. Then it, the types of things you can pay for this is in a uh, local government code 363 151 <clears throat> the district may finance all the costs of a crime control and crime prevention program including the costs for personnel administration expansion enhancement and capital expenditures the program may include police and law enforcement related programs including and then it has a list of about 36 things or 24 36 I can read all those off or give you some examples of that no, I you think you've like. answered the question because it says already personnel and capital expenditures, right? So which are our primary things that we're going to face yes. um, with our police department, right? There are certain steps you'd have to take, as I said earlier, you have to do that. And crime control prevention districts have an additional budgetary timeline and constraint that you have to flow, go through each year. It's just an extra meeting. They have to approve their budget at a certain time before it goes on. I mean, I hate so, that. I hate those additional controls on uh, all that extra red tape that we'd have to go through to yeah. get and now, the end. And just to, uh, another thing I don't think either of us mentioned, both of them, both the um, Crime Control Prevention District and the street maintenance, because remember we've been using, we had another provision that's expired where we were getting uh, 450 plus thousand dollars a year into street maintenance that is gone. Mm -hmm. So you know I, that's why I keep bringing up street maintenance again but that one it expires in four years so if we hold an election this November we're gonna have to hold another election right. the following you know in four years another election another election which you know may or may not be a bad thing but it's expensive to hold elections and it's time-consuming you know for staff and for the you know the the whole process so I just want to make sure you know that in the, in the crime control prevention district I think I read that when you hold the election you can determine how long of a period that is so, so it, you can kind of set oh I want it to last for 20 years or whatever but you still have to have an election somewhere down the road right so I mean I think I mean I just think there is a extra layer of bureaucracy in there and if there's value in that that's something you guys will need to determine um, but otherwise you know, you can also say as a council, and we, I think we've had a little bit of this conversation before, here's what we're going to use these funds for if we were to take this action. Um, 
so that you know that it's not something you know that staff could change but a future council could because you can't lock future councils into actions mr Dunn, did i hear this correctly that when you come up with this prevention district then you have to set up an and a budget up front uh, the, the, the CCPD has a budget they pass on to y'all, but they have to approve it at a certain time. But it initially, you not only the budget, you have to set the goals and then budget of the things you want to accomplish it, and then evaluate it to see if it's reaching those or you need to tweak those. Okay. So it's, it's not necessarily set in stone because, I mean, we have preliminary numbers of what we think this police department is going to cost to stand up. And Correct. if we go through that angle and we, we assign a number, oh, and correct. that number is, you know, we're, we're off by you know 300 400 half a million um w would we be able to go back and adjust that yes, number you, can, okay. you won't be able to go back and adjust the sales tax rate but uh -huh. you will be able to adjust yeah. the budget like just the, the budget and their goals and whatnot you won't change the total number you're receiving but you can change the allocation gotcha thank you count traditional discussions so I, I'm not opposed. I understand what Brian's talking about. I'm not opposed to d some way making sure we have the right regulations or processes in place to spend the $1.8 million that we might be bringing over. Should we bring 4A into the general fund, the current 4A into the general fund? If we're worried about how many dollars we're going to have for economic development, we could also increase the allocation to 4B via an election. And uh, that would, in essence, can you go to three quarter cent, uh, three quarter cent, and that would bring the same quarter into the general fund that we had before the street maintenance allocation expired. So we've, we've kept our street maintenance the same. We've kept economic development the same. In fact, we just eliminated 4A, but we combined it with 4B in essence, dollar-wise. Uh, and we still protected the 1.8 that 4A still has, even if we created a, a, another committee to administer those funds. I didn't know that, so that's good to know. One of my concerns ab about that, again, I sound like I'm talking on both sides of my mouth, is because on one hand, we don't know what we're going to face. And if we do that, if we have an election and put that other quarter cent over there, then now we've locked it up, in essence, too, if we do need it to, because we just don't know the cost of this police department. I mean, I think that's the big number in the sky that we don't know. And so I'm a, I am, on one hand, concerned about that, but I'm also concerned that how would we fund it? if we lock it up and so we just don't know what's our um, I'm sorry go ahead no, I was going to ask but whatever fund that we established for crime prevention whatever those dollars are and we talked about 300 to 400 thousand that's not going to come close to funding it so that's just a, a method of using some funds to fund the larger part because we already know we're going to probably use all of that potential money if we were to go that way. Yeah, correct. Dave, and I had one question. I'm sorry, with all these AV issues, it's kind of hindering our ability to communicate. But one question I had is, so when we go out, each item has to be listed separately. So you would have... On the ballot? Right. So you would have... First, the, you'd have to dissolve the 4A, I think. Right. Because if that doesn't happen, none of the others can happen. Right, but then if you do the CCPD and then you did the street maintenance separately, if one or the other failed, we would lose that quarter cent and it would yes. go back to the state. Is that correct? That, that's my yeah. understanding. You're not authorizing. Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> it's, there's a whole lot of what ifs and whole thing. Yeah, really more than right. two. We, we don't want that to happen. Right, I mean, and that, that's so. the only concern with doing yeah, I think that yeah, you CCP have to break them out in individual questions yeah. too. Yeah, obviously individual questions, but CCPD. I, I don't know what kind of message that sends to our our voters immediately. Yeah. 
when you, you're establishing a police department, you're coming right at the same time creating a crime prevention district. We're not certainly advertising we have any crime right now. Uh, I know we probably do, but I think of a crime prevention district as something that's being created because we've got a tremendous problem and we're trying to throw more dollars toward it, so we're giving up some dollars here to put into a, a, a limited resource. Uh, and I also think that, just as you pointed out, we don't want to get ourselves into a situation where we lose the, the quarter or half cent either, and it goes back to the state. Doing away with 4A might be the first election. If that passes, then we're, we're putting those dollars into the general fund allocated specifically, at least with this council, to whatever you want to allocate it to. I mean, it could be just general fund. That's what sales taxes are used for. But we might go so far as to say street maintenance, replacing our expired street maintenance tax, which you approved four years ago, now it'd be five, and and the remainder part to assist with the cost of the police department, if you wanted to go that far. And that would give the population of the voters, you know, do away with 4A, we've sold that to them, and we use the, uh, the dollars in such a way, almost as it was used before, but also as a way to mitigate some tax impact as we have debt obligations. Right. So I think, uh, you know, we're talking about, I think we're all kind of talking about getting rid of 4A. Uh, I think that is, you know, they're redundant um, committees and, and uh, groups right now. But uh, I'd like to say that um, we should definitely reach out to all those on 4A. And if, if we do go down that route, see how else they can continue to get them involved, you know. Um, maybe creating a uh, some type of committee, economic development committee or something that they can be uh, um, provide advice to the council or whatnot. Um, but you know, th in thinking about how which option we want to take, A, B, or C, you know, the the times are so th there's so much so there's so much unknown with this law taking effect where we are going to be limited to three and a half percent revenue growth I think at this time I think it would be better to have less limits on it and keep it a little more flexibility and freedom with that money for now and then later maybe we can you know in a few years after we see the impact of, of how um, the changes are affecting us, then we can maybe allocate it to a, a, a police force, or you know, specifically make it to a to to road growth or whatnot. So, I'd be in favor of more keeping it general for now, um, with maybe having creating some type of committee or something, maybe you know those on 4A or some other citizens that want to get involved and, and help us out in this. You know, I think we have some tough times coming up. So, you know, the more people involved. Um, to think about this, to think through the problems, I think I think we're gonna be better off. Uh, Kevin, would we not be able to? What if we just you know we've already got a committee, right? That's four B. Just expand the amount of people that are in four B to allow more you know citizens to come in. Can do that to, without changing the bylaws. You have changed the bylaws. Now would that be through so an election or? Too. I, I think it's state I, law. I think it's statutory yeah, it's too. Yeah, it's seven people. But um, I did want to mention that there's at least one that's termed out off of 4B, so you could look, and then there's a, uh, two or three others whose terms are, they're up for reappointment. So there is kind of a window of opportunity where you could pull, if they so chose, some people from 4A and blend those committees as long as we didn't exceed the seven. But there's some opportunity, we've been looking at that, like where terms are up and that type of thing, but yeah, you, um, the legal advice we've gotten is you can't go over seven. And I did want to mention one other thing to you, just not to add any undue pressure, but um, I had uh, Rachel pull the, um, the recommended election calendar, just when we need to be calling for elections, and this is an item that we would need to call for an election if you chose 
in the recommended period for calling the election is July 19th through August 9th. And so to stay within the recommended period, we would need to call it by next council meeting. Um, we might be able to eke into the one following, but I just really wanted you to understand that there is kind of a, a pretty tight timeline to make a decision upon this. We can't call that during a special council meeting, correct? You Rachel? could have a special council meeting yeah. if you didn't call it the next one. Yeah, and we have meetings, like each right. of the August Mondays, we have meetings. So we've got a little bit of wiggle room, but not a lot. Two readings, right? So it's two yeah. meetings? No. One? Just one. Just one. Just one meeting? Home rule charter just changed it. Oh, election. One reading on election. So it's not to hear a little bit more, not necessarily tonight, but before we make that decision about the crime prevention district. I think that's with even with regards to whether we fund it or whether it's a, a a tool that we use to mitigate the unknowns of what we don't know that we see from other cities. So I'm not sure what what other discussions we may have talked about in with regards to this. Are we talking about only funding or are we talking about other responsibilities as far as what? And I think that's why I'm, I'm hung up on this. Is it something that has to be funded, or can this be a, a committee that still is involved in the decisions that come down through our town with a new police force and, right. and things that could be presented so that we don't see yet? For a crime control prevention district, you must have this board that would approve expenditures. They'd have the budget. I mean, it's the closest equivalent that I can think of is like a 4A board. but. You could, notwithstanding that, if you just want to have a new committee that you all appoint, a new board of commission that is an advisory committee on, you know, matters of public safety, you absolutely could do that, okay. not and not go through an election for a crime control prevention district and add another layer of, you know, um, decision making and you know, being able, having to go back and review that. The council would stay the. The ultimate authority on how those expenditures are used and if you did it that way you would set the parameters of that Over. yeah and I think the more I've heard I mean I brought this up so I think let me just close the loop on this I think the more I've heard about the constraints of something like that um, I, I just I don't think I can support it um, just because it's again we're not talking about funding a whole police department we're talking about quarter cent we're not talking so I, I basically drawing my support from that from that element um, and kind of go back just to clarify I probably go back to B on our options um, moving that back to general fund I'll say I do like the idea of, of having some type of committee that can be involved again um, both on the economic side and then maybe on the police side too you know, um, again we're gonna uh, not only are we gonna have financial issues coming up in the near future um, we're gonna have a lot more issues with you know brand new police force and how to properly guide that through uh, have a successful so it may be good to have you know, some type of advice or whatnot, you know, some type of uh, Yeah, and that's not an unusual thing, uh, like a chief's advisory board or chief's advisory panel. That's yeah. not an unusual mm -hmm. thing at all, and I think it's very positive to give, especially, you know, when we're hiring a new chief, to give them, um, you know, a group that's advising and giving feedback. So, so, so David, would we, would we have a, an election first to abolish 4A? And if that if that was policy, if that was if that was positive, you, you could do it in the same election. Oh, same election, that. yes. So the first resolution or the first uh, well, it'd be to uh, dissolve 4A and apply that. Basic. This is so it'd be one election, or would it be if the 4A was abolished by election, then would there be a second resolution or whatever that said we're going to take the half cent and put it in the general fund? Uh, General It'd fund. Be one election, you could write it as abolish 4A and put that half cent. One yes or no vote. Yes. 
Yeah, and I, I got that from the comptroller. Okay, Remember, that was that email from them where they said it could be one measure. I don't want to risk losing that half cent. They might vote to do away with 4A and then not, not, and the then not vote to allocate the half cent, and we'd lose that to the state. But that gets a little more convoluted if you say do away with the half cent, then do a quarter cent here and a quarter cent here. Yeah, so we can do it in one, yes, one mark of the ballot. Yes. Good. Okay. And, and if good. the election failed, 4A would just continue on, the funds would continue to go to 4A and be no change in that. Right. Okay. So we do have a member of 4A here. Is this open? Can we ask him? But let's just finish the council discussions. Mm -hmm. Other additional discussions? So, Bosnia, you have anything to add? No, I, um, excuse me, I was, I was just thinking that um, I don't, I don't like bureaucracy in, in general. And to me, if there's, there is, there are two committees here that, that tend to overlap. We do have an economic development focus though. And we tend to drive those programs, I think, and really spend time, not, not that our compadres don't in 4B either, but that is our focus while they're in parks and which is also needed. but. <clears throat> but I'd, I'd want to say two things. Number one is I would hope the council would consider going back to try to re recoup those funds that are getting capped out. I think, I, I agree with Jim, I think I, I'm a pretty level-headed thinking person, you may not think so at times, but I think explain properly if we tell the citizens what's going on with this cap, that we've got all this growth going on and we're artificially being held low and my rate's not gonna change, don't throw that in there, but if you just say your rate's not gonna change, can we get that money back? I, I would love to give that a shot if, if that was possible, just to try to get those funds. <clears throat> in the meantime, and with the uncertainty of that, I would roll 4A in. I'd put it in the general fund. And I, I like Jim's idea also as well as if, if you're making this change and if it locks you for a certain period of time, does it if you roll it into the general fund? The general fund so, so you could... It's the crime control prevention district it's a specific period of time. Well, so if it's in the general fund, it, you can go back and you could kick that quarter back later once the dust settles and then get 4B functioning almost like half economic, half parks ag again. And, and I think he could make it work. And there, there are funds there, whether we can use them all for economic development, what's left of the million eight or whatever it is, that's great. But I appreciate the concern of the members on the board, but I think of the taxpayer and I, if we're gonna lose funds, I would rather not, not give it to a business, I'd rather give it to our taxpayers if they're having to come up short on, on funds to operate the town. And it's some tough decisions. And I can tell you right now, if you went back to 4B now and said, now we've got a little more emphasis on economic maybe, and just as much on parks, you know, there could be a little conflict there because you're weighing out two different projects. You could be looking at a ball field versus, you know, giving money to, to a business to get started. So it becomes a little more complex, but I think that can be dealt with. So, but I, based on everything I'm hearing and the uncertainty of things going forward, I'd roll it into the general fund. Okay. Paul, Thanks. can I clarify what that means? Because we were talking about taking the 1.8 million that belongs in uh, unfunded 4A at the time and designating that as economic development. When you say roll it into the general fund. Well, what I'm saying is the future revenues awesome. going into there. Okay, awesome. And then okay. the 1.8, yeah, if there are projects that we can do, that, that, we're all for it. But we're already doing some street improvements, for example, in the industrial area, we're funding that directly. So yeah, I'm sure there's uses for it, and that would be great. But definitely going forward to get through this uncertainty with the ability to go back. Well, thank thanks you. for your input and also thanks for your uh, service to the town. Oh, Many you. capacities. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks, sir.
So, Council, so what is the direction again for the staff? Uh, I say we move forward on the second option uh, of number two. So, option B of number two. That's what I think makes the most sense. Should should we give more than one option for the citizens to pick? Or, uh, no, if if we have more than one option and we may lose the money during the vote. No, we won't. It's confusing. I think if we. I think we should think stick to one option. I think it could be confusing because it's a complicated issue already. And I think if we unify our message behind the one option of using the, those dollars to really offset our costs on police department is going to be the bigger message here. The, yeah, the message is going to be, right, we got the one that we got to be addressing. And streets. And streets. Streets is, and police. Right. Are we taking the seed money for the future and using it for daily expense, right? So far, it's supposed to be the seed money. Are we using that? And, and to your point on seed money, I think there is. I think there are other options, whether it be tax abatements and things that will help. Things we're not going to be able to take advantage of in the future anyway. We have some new options with this cap on the on the tax abatement side that gives us really more incentive power on that other side. Correct. So, Mr. Vail, I didn't get what you said. We can take do what again? Well, I wouldn't. You could act on it in terms of telling me that that's what you want to do, but then we would need to bring back the measure to call the election. That we would. Well, we could have that. Right. 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 I, I still believe, almost like a vehicle maintenance plan, we got to have some sort of economic development fund. We didn't put money into every year. That way, we don't end up in using this tax because when the 3.5 revenue cap comes into picture, you're going to be under pressure to spend all the money we have for our maintenance and operations. I, I don't want to be in a situation where we have we don't have enough money to pay for a potential business. That's really my concern with this one. I, I think I've expressed that. But, but, Mayor, in, in addition to 4B dollars, we can always do tax abatement, sales tax rebates. So we're never going to run out of opportunities to do economic development. I, I, I don't necessarily disagree with what you said, but I don't, I'm a little nervous about allocating dollars to a, for a reserve out of our general fund because we have other options available. Again, sales tax rebates, tax abatements, uh, 380 agreements, those kinds of things that we can do in addition to 4B. So we have those options that we can always create without putting additional dollars into a reserve fund just in case. Yeah, again, I'm talking about the sales tax, right? Not, not the ad valorem tax I'm talking about. I'm talking about the half a cent if the preference for the council is to move forward with abolishing 4A. Uh, in my mind, at least, uh, my, my preference is to have at least some money allocated for the economic development. That way, there is some seed money kept. I understand sure. the intent is pure. We, we want to do what you want to do. I, I get that. But I don't want to ever think that we spent the future money, my children's college tuition fund, for my vacation, right? That's maybe a bad example, but because seed money is important, future money is important. So, I guess my only concern is, does that make it a harder vote at that point? Does that give us more option of losing it and going somewhere else if we're trying to make an allocation? Because we can make that allocation as a council without without directing tax revenue towards it. I, I think you're correct. I, I don't okay. think that's a citizen board. Okay. I think that's yeah. a council yes. policy approach. I don't yeah. think that, So yeah. once you, if you were to take the step that you're discussing, then you, you will need to create a budget for how is that, you know, money that's coming into the general fund going to be spent, and that's going to be up to you to determine you know, this percentage for streets, this percentage for um, police, and this percentage to go towards that economic development fund. So 
But I really do want to stress the, the tax abatement that Mr. Wade mentioned is really important because what that does is it takes the money off the top of the values, which kind of starts to mitigate a little bit of the 3.5 issue because we're not going to see that money anyway because the more those values go up, the more our rate goes down. So that's going to become a very important tool for us. That's a very strategic approach yes, going sir. forward. But, but regardless, if you are concerned, you know, we're going to have um, the almost a million dollars a year going into 4B, plus we'll have the $1.8 in a fund waiting for those opportunities when we need to, uh, you know, offer incentives. So if you wanted to allocate a little bit of the new money coming in, you could, but do remember you have the $1.8 million sitting Fine. there. I, I want to be able to have a story, an honest statement to tell citizens that I'm not spending my future money on current projects. Sure, current projects are important, no doubt, right? That, we, we can't lose that. We cannot lose that vision of the future. Yeah. I, I don't think anyone is losing it either, okay? I'm not saying that we don't have the vision either, but anyway. Susan, I think staff got the direction, right? To move yes, forward sir. with an ordinance? And we'll come back at the next meeting with that for your approval. Okay. One quick question, 2.5 to 1.8, what happens to 700,000? It's for debts that they've yes. already Go. incurred. What is that again? Uh, well, debts and commitments that they've already incurred. Already done, bridge. So mm -hmm. we, uh, water. Plan. Like incentives that they've already committed to, contractually, agreements that have already been signed, plus the debt payment that they make payment on. So does that bring, bring down our INDUS rate now? No. I, I, I think when we bring this back to you, it'll dovetail with the fact that we're bringing the 4A and the 4B budget back to you next, next meeting. And so you're going to see those incentives and in, Tracy, correct me if I'm wrong, you're going to see those incentives that they've already, what we consider committed to, either by contract or verbally, that, that are sitting out there. So the difference between the 2.5 and the 1.8 is they're helping the general fund with its debt to some degree, and then they have made commitments for certain incentives. So we're taking that off and saying we're going to honor those. Is that... Do you agree with that, Tracy? Okay. We're going to honor those, and then anything else that you want to see, we can start looking at those budgets, because they're going to be two separate budgets for a while, and then we're going to be able to bring them into one budget. But I, I guess my point to you is when you see the budgets come before you, you it's going to clarify some of those incentives they've already committed to. Okay. Those agreements we've been approving. I'm sorry? Sunnyvale Park Square. Those things we've been approving are commitments out of 4A also. Okay. Not a debt payment, but the incendiary commitments. The 4A um, contributes 19% of our debt payment on the bridge here at Highway 80 and okay. Collins, and they've done that for several years. And if you add up all of those annual debt payments until that bond is paid off, don't quote me, but it's about $453,000. Is it, I know we passed the budget in September. We don't know how the election will turn out. So the high interest rate will not be impacted, right? We, we cannot predict that. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, the high interest rate will not, when we pay off the, uh, the remaining debt on the bridge, that means we have no more debt payment. Correct. Okay. Um, I, I got my answer. Yeah, it won't, imp it won't change it. Just to clarify, don't they pay just a part of that payment? They don't pay the whole payment? Correct. They pay 19% of that payment okay. on the bridge. Got it. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So the last item. Okay. Item number 10, um, item number 9, right, I should say that, am I right? Yes, nine. Receive update from town manager regarding the recruitment process of a police chief. Just real quick, um, we did execute the contract with SGR, 
we um, finished the job description and we've provided them with all of the materials to update the recruitment brochure. Um, so we're expecting that recruitment brochure this week um, and it will be posted on all the websites and already we are getting calls from candidates so we're referring them over to SGR. So we're directly on track, doing good. Council questions? Can we get an update on jobs in the road? This is this is not the agenda. A, a disregard. Okay. We'll add that to your weekly. Official update. disregard. Thank you. Moving on to item number nine. Uh, receive update from town manager regarding the recruitment. Uh, I'm sorry. Moving to number two. <laughs> I was going to allow you one more time for it to get it right. Billy's disregarding mayor's comment. <laughs> <laughs> number ten. Mayor and council request for future staff updates and agenda items. Mr. Allen. <laughs> Can we get an update on jobs and road, please? Yes, sir. I think one thing I didn't ask in the budget section, Liz, will be the impact of the lack of water usage on our water fund. Mm. So I think it might have been in there, but I'm concerned a little bit about the amount of rain, which is good, but it does impact our um, revenues. Our water, our revenues on the water fund. So I'm a little bit concerned about that. I think this is putting into the chart. You're going to be blown away. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> yeah. My wife said, oh, our water bill's so low. And I said, oh, that's not good. <laughs> well, I know too much. We'll, we'll bring back some analysis on that. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Oh. So. I love that already. Thank you. Good. Oh, I don't know if it's a pleasant. I don't think she meant that to you. But yes, she'll be surprised. Well, I'll be pleasantly surprised. Council, other additional so, agenda? Something yes, we, uh, we might, in my opinion, need to look at. I'm noticing with all the new construction, especially on smaller lots and those with J drives, I'm wondering if the street width is adequate. A J drive does not have a long driveway and they're not putting in circle drives. So is that going to cause issues with parking on these streets? And if you drive through some of the new neighborhoods, there's no room for car parking. You got just enough room for two cars to pass. And I'm worried that we could end up in a situation where we either have to designate no parking zones or no parking on city streets, or we end up with a situation like we have in another neighborhood. And uh, but if you drive through some of these streets with the J drives. There are short driveways, there's no circle drive, and parking in the streets could become an issue. So I don't know if we need to look at that okay. in some way. Look at the best practices, I guess. Okay. Good, good question. See you have something? No. Anyone else? That's my form. I just want to say thank you, staff, for all your hard work in the budget and all these other, other projects, so thank you. Uh, one other comment, Mayor um, Sunnyfest, awesome success. Thank you, staff. I'm, I saw Liz directing traffic. I saw, I mean, everybody was working. And so I just want to say thank you for all the overtime and hard work it's put in. I heard a lot of good comments from residents. And so thank you so much to the staff for, for that wonderful event. I thought it was, I thought it was really good. That was a win. And all the sh sheriff support we had, thank you, Sergeant Evans, for that. So it was awesome. It was a good event for everybody. Thanks for controlling the weather also, it's beautiful. <laughs> okay, now time is 9.40. Uh, I'm going to adjourn the regular town council meeting for town of Sunnyvale for July 8th. Hopefully our AV system will be working better next year, next month. Good night. <laughs>